everybody uh continuing forward on this new musical uh, i plan on recording the entire creative process so um what i did last time is i wrote a log line and the log line is on the screen it's a little bit long but that's okay and it's interesting i got to kind of pitch this uh to an author friend of mine yesterday i said hey i found my new project i'm working on i'm pushing all the novels back and working on a musical and he said oh yeah what's it about and I said, it's about a baboon employed by the Port, of Lands of Port Elizabeth Railway Station in South Africa who, for over nine years, ran the railway switches without making a single mistake. His wages, 20 cents a month plus a half can of beer every week. And he, he was like, whoa, that's, is that a true story? And I'm like, yeah, it's absolutely true. So that's my log line. And that, that just... By writing a log line, um, it causes your mind to open up to the idea. You start thinking about it. And um, I was talking with my daughter about it, actually, and she's also a writer. And, uh, and as you talk about it and work it through in your mind, ideas start to break loose for your story. So I don't have a lot of information on this story because there's not a lot of information out there. But the next step is to write a treatment. So that's what I'm going to do. So let me shrink this video down. Get my ugly mug out of the way. So, so far I have a log line. Now, in Word, I'm making a new file. And I'm going to call it... Uh, let's see. Craig Writing. Put in my screenplays folder. Jack and jumper treatment okay so treatment is a treatment is just a, a really short synopsis so that's what I'm gonna do usually I write about one paragraph for act one one paragraph for act two and one paragraph for act three so let's do it uh, Jack and Jumper Treatment. Okay, so I know Act 1 should end with Jack losing his legs. So, uh, let's see. Let's say... Or jumper. Jumper works security for the South African Railway. He kicks a bum. Let's see, we're going to do this. He brazenly rail car finds a bum in a box car and kicks him off. <clears throat> Let's have him go he visits favorite watering hole cantina in town. The is alive.
Jumper's boss. His job. Next morning. Jumper. Okay, so there's Act 1. So Jumper works security for South African Railway. I'll fill in the names and places later. He brazenly leaps from rail car to rail car. He finds a bum in a box car and kicks him off. He visits his favorite watering hole, a cantina in town. The stage is live with cantina dancers and singers. One in particular has the spotlight, beautiful woman, with whom everyone is infatuated. Jumper's boss takes him aside and sets up a meeting to discuss his job. The next morning in the meeting, Jumper's boss tells him that there is a community of vagrants who rides a certain rail train that could actually take place in the cantina. Can he take care of it? Jumper rides the line, kicking vagrants off the cars. The train moves along through the countryside. The moment of triumph. You're going to have to put up with my misspellings. You know, when I'm doing this stuff, I don't care about that. And grammar. At the moment of triumph for Jumper, he miscalculates a difficult leap and falls to the tracks. The train rolls over him. End of Act One. Okay, so I'm seeing some characters come up, so I gotta list those guys. So let's do a character slot here. We're gonna do Jumper. Jumper's boss. Uh, Cantina girl. Okay, there's characters. Let's also do... Maybe I could do this. Let's also do places. Places. We have the cantina. Train. We have the... Boss's office. That's probably about it. All right, now I go turn on the cooler because it's freaking hot in here. Two, we are going to have 
what happens in Act 2? Act 2, we have... Let's do this. Jumper gets fired. Put that. Yeah, okay. Let's let's do it here. B. Jumper. Jumper's boss fires jumper. Determined. So let's put this up here. I'm not going to do the boss's office. I'm going to say the signalman. train painstakingly the only time that um, adjectives work is when you're writing this kind of stuff this sort of crappy stu reference stuff that you're going to use for yourself out to the boss hires him on the condition faster <clears throat> okay that's good this is a little too detailed for treatment but that's okay I'm going to run with it Okay, let's see. Jumper. Let's take this. And we're going to put it in a new file because that's just too detailed. We're going to put this as... Um, we'll call it ideas. We're going to set it aside because we're going to stick to this treatment. So for Act 2, Jumper gets his job back. Is uh, 
Okay, then we're going to do Jumper visits the cantina, but he isn't precarious. He just wants a drink. The cantina girl notes has sympathy for him. Jumper visits a market. He sees a man with a baboon. The baboon is leading an ox cart. is money. Baboon Jack. To the signal, signal house. Let's add something. The engineer, the engineer's tip. I don't know if this really happened, but it's going to happen in this. the signalman I'm going to say no somehow there has to be money in here and I don't think a tip is good I'll just put there's money. <laughs> I'll figure it out later. There's money kept in the So what I want to do is I want to have one night
No, let's not do that. Couple of thugs. Jack. So there's two more characters. We'll probably bring those guys back. Thug one and thug two. Then I'm gonna say jet uh oh jumper. <sighs> he gathers peanuts. During one of her acts, she and flirts. Okay, so and then <sighs> Jumper brings Jack. Let's put she needs to have some more sympathy on him for some reason before she does this. I'm gonna say, let's put a scene in here where <clears throat> maybe right here. I'll work that out later. Okay, so one night, I'm going to say Jumper brings Jack. Tina. Everyone teases the baboon. Meanly. How do you spell ruckus? <clears throat> I 
Let's have the two toughs. The two thugs. Breaks up the row. Jack leaves. Take his. He has to have something that he carries around. Maybe he has a satchel. Satchel. I'll just say satchel. Okay, so the cantina. Girl. His satchel. She sees how smart Jack is running the switches. Jack seeing the sparks. Pushes them. Nothing happens. Except a moment. See how we're rolling a little romance into this? Making it up. All right, now we're going to push into Act 3. So, what we need to do is. I'm going to say, like, so what happens in the real story is a woman sees what's going on, that there's a primate running the switches, and she feels unsafe. So she reports Jumper. <coughs> and I want to make her kind of uh, important. I'm going to make her... Uh, I don't like piety because that's so overused. But she could be like the governor's daughter or something. Let's let's make her the governor, the governor's daughter. The governor's daughter. It's a new character. Might as well put the governor in here. Witnesses.
Let's not make it the daughter. Let's make it the governor's cousin, sister-in-law. New money. So she's a new money person. Spelling the word governor. The governor sees it for himself. I'm going to put a new thing up here. Named items. We need to name the cantina. We need to get a name for the railroad railway. Some of this is real, some of it's not. <sighs> okay. Um, <clears throat> He, the authority, the railway pre president, railway president, he reports this, and the railway president is up here. Railway president tells Jumper's boss has to fire and Jack. This devastates. This devastates Jumper, Cantina Girl, him, but he isn't hearing it. He has lost. Him that if the rail company you know, how smart yeah. jumper. This gives this gives jumper an idea. He goes to his boss, begs. The railway 
president. This is probably Act Three. So this is this is where Act Three starts, right here. Cantina girl tries to console him. He isn't hearing it. He's lost everything. Tells him that if the rail company only knew how smart Jack is, they wouldn't have was. They wouldn't have fired him. This gives Jumper an idea. He goes to his boss and begs for his job back on the condition of rail company tests. Tests Jack. Railway president agrees. Half out of misspelled curiosity. Um, Jack under supervision of the pre railway president and the governor undergoes a test. OR, OR, OR. Which he passes. And that's true. They paid Jumper, or Jack, half a can of beer a week and 20 cents a month. So that's a detail that needs to make it into the story. Okay, so then he's got his job back. So at the end, let's say Jack and Jumper visit the cantina. Let's let's do this. This is where um, Cantina Girl kisses ja Jumper in excitement. Then we end with a big cantina scene. This time,
Wiser Man. So let's do this. Let's, during the test, because i got to resolve something with these two thugs, right? So during the test, we'll have the two, the two thugs try to throw, try to sabotage, sabotage the test. Sabut. <laughs> I don't know how to spell the word sabotage suddenly. There it is. We're going to say Jack. Jack um, puts him in barrels and goes back to his job without skipping a beat. So that does two things. It takes care of the two thugs, puts them in their place, and makes Jack even more valuable because not only can he run the switches and hand the coal key over, he can run security, which he's already proven in the story. And that's it. Ooh, that's the treatment. That's all I need. Okay, next thing. I'm going to wrap this video and maybe do another one. So there you go. So when you're doing a treatment, this is how you do it. Now, you, you'll notice as I've written this treatment, a lot of ideas broke loose. And the reason you go undergo this exercise is to break those ideas loose. So the idea of the two thugs came loose. Uh, I, I had already thought about a, a, I already thought about a romance between the Cantina Girl and Jumper. But that fleshed out a little bit as I was writing this. Like, she's the one that gives him the idea to go and test the monkey. Um, the governor's sister-in-law is an interesting new thing that came up in the governor. Uh, we got to respell that. Um, also, uh, as I was writing this, as I was writing this, I fleshed out the... You know, it broke loose a lot of stuff. So now I have something, you know, that I from which I can work. So what this does is it forces you. I actually wrote, started writing a scene synopsis, remember, and uh, it was going too far. And I want to keep this just a top level sort of high level view of the story. So I actually took that paragraph out and put it in another uh, document somewhere else. So this is what I have now. I have a treatment. So I'm going to move on to the next part. And the next part is to put together a kind of a, a more fleshed out outline. And I'll show you how to do that or how at least I do it in the next video. So again, a treatment is kind of like you try to keep it in story, in story time. You have kind of a short short act one and then an act two about the same size as act one and act two three and then an act three which is also short so this is about right proportionally I have all this stuff I have to name which is gonna shake loose some research I have to find out the real governor's name and maybe I'll see if he had a sister-in-law be cool to base it on real characters I gotta name the cantina. I gotta find out a little bit about the train company. I need to find out how a signalman's station works. I have no idea what those switches do. Gotta name the cantina. Find out a little bit more about the town. Find out what the rail company's named, and all that. So I have some homework that I need to do. But first, before I do, before I dive into those details, I'm not so concerned about them. I'm concerned about telling a compelling story. I'm going to jump into a little bit more involved outline. 
So I go treatment, um, rough outline, and then I just go into a scene-by-scene -scene synopsis. And we're not quite there yet. So that's it for this video, but I'll be back for more. Hope you're not too bored. I'll catch you on the next one.